Welcome to the Galactic Collaboration Summit. Thank you for joining my session today. Um, my name is Jeremy Thake. I'm a Galactic Giraffe from Microsoft today. Uh, you can follow me on at jthake on Twitter. And today I'm going to be talking about connecting to Microsoft Graph from Teams. Uh, I'm going to quickly jump into this. So we're going to be building a React app and connecting to the Microsoft Graph. And then I'm going to be using the new Visual Studio extension for Microsoft Teams to get that React app into Teams. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can wire up the authentication with Microsoft Teams using the Teams.js library. And then I'm actually going to show you a real world application with all the galactic stardust and wrap that up with a few references and so forth. So with that, let's launch and get cracking on this. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to PowerShell and create that Azure AD application. So I need to connect to the graph using the Microsoft Graph PowerShell commandlets. Um, I've already logged in on this terminal before, so it's immediately got me in. And if I just paste in this little bit of code, this is going to create an Azure AD application called the Galactic App. Um, we're going to Im use implicit grant settings to enable access token issuance and enable ID token issuance, which is what you need for client side development. And the web redirect URL, which will happen once I'm signed in to Azure AD directory, it redirects me back to this, is localhost 3000. That'll go away and just go and create that application. And if I just basically grab that result back, you'll see that um, there's the app ID that I will use later on to go create some things. And next we need to go create that React app. So oops, I'm already in one demo. So I'm just gonna go run this and create a galactic app. Um, it's gonna be a TypeScript template. So that's return now, and obviously I skipped that because that downloaded the entire internet of node packages. So I'm just gonna go into that Galactic app, and now we just need to get two more node packages. Um, one is the M Microsoft Graph Toolkit, the MGT. And the MGT actually has some React components that make it even easier to use React. Um, so I'm just gonna pull those down as well. So that's gonna pull those in. And then what we're gonna do is just open that up in Visual Studio Code, and we'll start plugging in some other configuration. So just run my code app here. And I'll just snap it into my screen so you can see it well. And this gives you a basic kind of structure with an app and an index.tsx. And what we're gonna do is just gonna pull in some providers. So from a provider perspective, we just need to go grab those um, from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So they've built these providers um, that essentially allows you to very, very easily with a few lines of codes using MSO under the covers connect to the Microsoft Graph. Now, that'll pull those in, but what I'm going to do is be a little bit lazy here and grab some code um, that I had before. So, it see me type everything from scratch. Um, and I'm going to put this client ID in that we just created. Oops. Like so. And we're going to need some scopes. And so the application that we're going to use today is using a few. So um, basically, I'm passing those as in a collection of all these bits and pieces that we'll go through in a moment. So what this is doing is using those providers. Um, I'm passing in that application ID, which we got when we created it, and those scopes. Easily done, right? Now, in the actual application that loads when the React module runs, the app.tsx, we need to basically gut this and put in our own code of what we want to run. So the nice thing about Microsoft Graph Toolkit is it's actually really simple to get this stuff going. So I'm going to import a bunch of React components, the login, agenda, people, MGT template props from that MGT React web control components library that I talked about. And I'm also going to, just for giggles, pull in the strongly typed Microsoft Graph components so that wherever I'm like accessing objects that are returned from the graph, I'll get some nice syntax inside of my React IDE inside of Visual Studio Code. Now, when I say how easy it is to get this code to work, um, if I just basically run this um, code, I'm going to get a login component, and then I'm going to get this nice agenda view component. And I'm even going to have the ability that when I click on this particular event, I want to run a function for that event. And essentially what that will do is, um, sorry, not a function, a template for the event, uh, which will actually allow me to customize how my event renders on the screen with a, a subject label with the event.subject, as well as a built-in people card um, that will list all of the attendees from that event that I have inside of my Outlook calendar. So you can customize how your web components are 
rendered on the screen really, really easily. Now, this is giving me a squiggly. For the purposes of demos, and you know, it sounds like a lot of people do this anyway, um, we're not gonna use strict um, inside of this application, but obviously you can add a little bit more code and get that to work nice and nice and well. I can run that up now, essentially. So if I just go back into my PowerShell here and just do npm start, they'll actually go compile all my code and um, I'm not gonna run it in this profile. We haven't used edge profiles before. I have many different personalities. My personality today is the MS Graph demo tenant. So I'm actually gonna load my application there. Okay, you see this is loaded up and I have my signing control. And so in a few lines of code, we've basically got the ability to sign into this tenant with my username and password for that particular tenant. You'll see that it's even given me the consent screen with all those permissions I had as part of the code and uh, that's called the Galactic app. It's unverified because we haven't got through publisher verification for that registration. It's gonna pick that user and, and now I'm signing as Jeremy, so my signing picker has now turned to my name, photo, signing options. And if I go to my calendar and take a look at today, um, you'll see that we have a, uh, a team offsite and I need to put some stuff in my calendar, so I'm just gonna pretty put in a ship party here and we're gonna invite a bunch of people. So Beth, Nina, let's bring in Isabella. Why didn't Beth come through? And Elise, and that should do it. Um, oh, and I need to make it a Teams meeting too, right? So we click send there, so we see ship party. And so then when I refresh, oh, I already had ship party, but um, you see now I have ship party and these ones with the various different people inside it. So with a few lines of code, we've got you know the ability to have hover overs and seeing people's contact cards and you can customize what gets rendered in these things with all their profile photos. And you know, in this one, I've rudimentarily um, rendered this. Now, we can go over to mgt.dev and see all these different components. Today, I've just demonstrated the agenda and the login controls. Um, but you can see here that there's all sorts of different examples of rendering. And if I look in the templating, agenda templates. Um, you can see you can do cool things like this as quite easily with some additional HTML. So we're making it really easy to customize and render and leverage a lot of the uh, fluent UI that we have uh, inside Microsoft that's open sourced as well. So connected to the graph in a React web uh, very, very easily using some PowerShell to register that stuff. Now, how do we get this into Teams? Well, Teams requires obviously access to the web application you're running and I'm developing locally. So the first thing I actually need to do is get my React app running um, available in the cloud. Obviously localhost won't work. So we're gonna use a tool, Ngrok, and we're essentially gonna run it on my local port of 3000 and create an Ngrok URL. So I'm gonna go grab this URL and I'm gonna go back into my browser and I'm gonna run this. Now, when I click on here, what's likely gonna happen, and should do, is my redirect URL is not gonna work because it's not configured. When you're using Ngrok, every time you run it, you're gonna get a new Ngrok URL as you pay for it. Um, I haven't got a paid account, so I'm gonna have to go in here and add that URL um, and click save. This is like the only change you'll have to keep doing in Azure AD, and you can automate this with the PowerShell commands as well. So now if I go back, and refresh that and just click sign in. When I log in this time, okay, it might take a little bit to take. When I go this time, it'll sign me in on this URL, which means this website technically is now available online as long as I have this running on npm start inside of my terminal. So the next step is actually to um, go in here and go open up a, um, a Teams extension. So inside of Visual Studio Code, if I go back to this application, um, when we go into extensions here, I can type for Teams and you'll see that there's a Microsoft Teams toolkit. I've already got it installed, click install and pull it down. The latest version is 0.94, which was released at build in the end of May. And you'll see that now I have this additional option. Oh, my resolution is pretty small, and so I don't get it in that top thing, but you can see here, that's what it looks like. 
and I have the ability to go create a brand new Teams project, which is going to essentially for now scaffold up a vanilla JavaScript project. But you also have the benefit, like I have, of having a standalone React app where I can basically get this tooling to put and configure it to make it a Teams app from just a standard regular React app, which is actually really cool. Now, to do that at the moment, what you need to do is import an existing package. Now, the way you do that, and I'm just going to briefly talk about this, is you need to go into Teams and you need to go create an app in App Studio. Now, the team have told me that this is going to be gone pretty soon. Um, so, oh, that was so zoomed out. But if I go to Apps and I search for um, App Studio here, you can essentially install this and then once it's installed, open it and go over to the manifest editor and go create one, right? So I can create one in here. There's a few things you have to fill out. This will not be required um, soon. You'll be able to just basically do this all through within Visual Studio Code. Um, this is just a way of doing this with an in-place web project you already have. I've already done this work. So I'm gonna come in here and go import app package. And I'm gonna to go to my downloads and pull down my Galactic Demo Zip, which is essentially what you get from the App Studio. What that does for you, um, other than give you this night like, UI to be able to go in and see essentially what you did in App Studio inside of Teams directly in here. And again, I'm demoing this on a low resolution, so it will look better if I zoom, zoom out. This is the same interface I have um, inside of Teams. You can see here I've created a tab for my Galactic Demo that I'm gonna host this thing in. And inside of my file structure, um, basically what it's done is it's added um, a publish, if I zoom back in a bit, um, it's added a, um, a publish folder with a development zip, which is as I'm changing my Teams package, this is the zip you wanna upload into your environment and an environment variable here. Now I've changed that ngrot URL. This was from the, pulled it through in the package. So I need to change that. So I'm gonna go here and just grab my ngrot URL again. And that's basically what the package will point to uh, when I launch this app in Microsoft Teams in my web client. Um, so that's one thing you need to go, go change. And then the other thing I'm just gonna double check inside of the toolkit, um, which will involve me zooming back out again a little bit, is if I go to my domains here, um, my valid domains is the old ngrok URL. So I'm gonna just delete that URL and I'm gonna go add, I don't need the HTTPS. I'm gonna go add that one. And um, I'm gonna go to my tab and make sure that the tab that I launched goes to the correct one, which is set from the old import. So I'm just gonna click save there. So it's just two places. Inside, what do I do when I click on the tab inside of Teams? I'm gonna launch this website, well, not that, but launch this URL. And then what do I do in domains and permissions? And we just need to make sure that that URL is um, the valid one that we're running in Grok on against at the moment. So we've done that. Now, once we've done this, um, essentially what we can do is the package, whenever I make changes inside of this editor, it automatically has a watch on these changes that effectively uh, updates this manifest JSON file, which you can edit directly. Um, and it creates a new development zip file. I can go over to Teams now and go to Apps. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I can sideload, uh, for those of you familiar with SharePoint, my app. And so my Galactic app here, if I go to Publish and click Open, that will go and spin for a bit and show me I have this Galactic Demo app. Um, and if I click on that, I can add this app. And what that will do is it will put on my left-hand side rail. And you'll actually immediately see that the app's running um, and it's working dandy. But um, if I refresh this, um, and if I actually signed out of my application, the reason that was working before is because obviously it's grabbing the context of it running outside of Teams but it will misfunction because of the way that sign-in is different when you're inside a Teams personal app here, or even if you're in a Teams channel tab as well. And so we just need to tweak a few things. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to go get the Teams uh, JS um, NPM package. So I'm just gonna go load that in. And then what I need to do is I need to go over to my code 
uh, into my Galactic app code and go into my index and I need to change the way the auth works. So I'm going to zoom back out so you can all see it nice and nice and clearly there. And the first thing we actually need to do is import that um, team.js library. And so that's where we're going to use some of the magic of how teams work. Now, right now, the provider we're using is mSAL. I want this application to work both standalone in a React web app, but I also need it to work in sort of a personal app. So the easiest way to do that is just to change my code a little bit. Now I'm going to um, just paste this in and grab my old old ID and, and tweak. And obviously I could have refactored this a little bit and have my client ID up at the top. And so just to explain the logic, what this is actually doing is saying the Teams libra uh, library component that I'm getting from the Teams.js package I'm going to pass that into my MGT Teams provider. And then the MGT has a thing of saying is available, which basically means is my web app running inside Teams right now? And if it is, the provider I want you to create is a Teams provider and pass in this stuff. If my app isn't running in Teams, I'm just going to pass through what I had before, which was the MSRL provider. All good and dandy. Now I do need to change one other thing when you may have noticed that my auth pop-up needs to be set correctly here with teams provider the way teams sign on auth works is essentially you're going to pass it's going to jump you back into the login for azure ad and then on the way back in it passes it through to this page called teams auth and we have to create that file and we also need to handle that in the routes in react and so the quick way of doing that is if i just change this code to say if the Windows location that's requesting on React uh, web server is Teams Auth, we're going to show the Teams Auth um, component. If not, just load the app normally. And so it's just how we handle routes very simply for this demo. I need to go create this React component. So I'm going to go create a new file here um, called TeamsAuth.tsx. And there is very, very little code that gets created in here. Um, I'm going to just go paste that in here. Um, basically, we, we need the Teams provider from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit here again. And I'm just going to do a Teams provider .handle off. Magic done. That's as simple as it is. It'll say now signing you in and, and handle that all for you and go back into the application. So I don't need to change anything here. But one thing I, I have to redo is because we're now on the sign in, going to be not going back to the normal root page, I do need to go back into here um, and actually change this to, to have the full path. Um, and I'm going to quickly change that down to lowercase. case. Um, and so otherwise, we get an invalid URL on that too. So we're good to go here. That didn't like that. So I'm going to. Um, I'm going to quickly add that again without a space in it. That's why I didn't like it. Click save. And I don't need to republish the Teams app. I've not changed any of the configuration of the application at all. So if I refresh the Galactic Demo personal app here in Teams, that's just going to keep loading it. I don't have it running because I stopped it to do that NPM install. So if I run the app up again, that wasn't... Um, ngrok failing that was just the fact i didn't have the web app running locally and now when i run that up oh i got one extra bit of code i need to change um i didn't reference that file i created in my index so i just need to click on my magic little bulb there and add that reference to my component and if i refresh that now actually auto refresh but it was beat me to it Um, and I can't find the Teams provider because I need to add that into my references up the top too. And so now, okay, the app's running inside of the personal app with the sign-in. If I click sign-in here, it's going to bump me through. It already had logged me in before, so it remembered that in Teams. And it's kind of put me in and returning and rendering that list. So this is a very simple way of having a vanilla react app that called the graph um, with just demonstrating getting that running but also then hooking this into a personal app using the visual studio code extension 
um, using the Microsoft Graph Toolkit and the Teams JS library to get graph calls in here. So that's kind of a first first step. Now we do need to sign in here, and I'll talk about some new stuff that's coming from Teams in the future in a moment of how we can even get rid of the need to even click sign in in these personal applications. But for now, this is what's available in V1 as a solution. Now this demo is a bit lame um, because all we're doing is returning events from a calendar and showing a few nice photos of some of the wonderful employees at Microsoft and the Microsoft Graph Toolkit team. Um, let's jump over to something a little bit more advanced. So this app we've spent a little bit more time on. Um, this is called the Moderator app. And you can see here that um, I'm signed in and it's pulling the same information. It just looks a lot prettier. Um, I'm going to grab an example event here, which has you know another six of nine odd people in it, um, which matches to what's in my calendar. And when I click Moderate, it's going to show me a view here. And it will show me I'm the moderator. And here are all the people that are in that meeting. Some of them you may recognize. And Right now it's got a default group size of five. I can change this down to say, I want groups of three and it'll automatically pick those things up. Now, when I do this and create breakouts, um, it's gonna go away and call the Microsoft Graph Teams API to go provision um, a new team with channels for each of those different groups. I'm just gonna post a bunch of messages um, away and at mention those people. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of that code. So the code looks similar again. It's using that Teams provider. It's pulling in those scopes it's doing these available stuff as normal to the point where I had to look up to make sure I was opening in the right project. Um, and the really sophisticated bit here is in my event view, um, I can come in here and see some of this code. And we're doing a lot of things, like we're gonna go away and get all the different participants of that online meeting that are there live when I click create. And if I go through and follow that command, um, all I'm doing is using the Microsoft Graph JavaScript SDK um, to go and get all the members of that particular chat of that meeting from the meeting ID. Um, and then obviously that one is still in beta, so I'm using the beta endpoint within the Microsoft Graph. And then when that once that gets returned, I make sure it's not null and has values, and I return that in, back into that previous um, component. And you can see here there's lots of other graph calls, like get client.api and me online meetings post and then putting in start end date of that meeting and that would have gone away and created an online meeting for each of the individual groups so that they can go join their own little breakout group have that call and then jump back in the main call afterwards um, and then some of the other cool things here um, around sending messages is um, we're building out some you know just a message here we're going to essentially um, put in who the person is who's sending the message and um, what you'll see here is we're iterating through and we're going to post that message as HTML directly into that chat. And so there's all sorts of different niceties you can do um, in, inside of those inside of that area. Now, if I go look for the references of this particular one, um, you'll see that inside of that, um, sorry, if I go into my breakout view and I do create online meetings, oh no, sorry, there. Um, you'll actually see that what we're doing in this case is that for every group that gets created, I'm going to send that message and I'm going to post it, you know, replace the group name with the group, you know, group number one, group number two, group number three. And then we have a bunch of um, HTML code here of like, join this meeting and at mention them and so forth. So it's really straightforward to use this stuff um, using the Microsoft Graph Toolkit as well as the Graph JavaScript SDKs. Um, and you'll see here that that's come back. I can, you know, use these little monikers and say you have five minutes left and that will actually go away and post that message and then, okay, come on, you've got to come back into the main meeting and I can just say you've got zero minutes left and that will actually send them. So if I went over into um, Teams here and um, had a look, oh, this is the Teams offsite breakout. Um, you can see that it created those groups for me. It at mentioned those people in each of the different groups. Um, so they would have all got activity notifications and you can see here, you know, let's, let's have these private breakouts on there. Um, so it's really cool. It's, it's smart that it does all this. And then after the fact, if I'm done moderating, um, I, I did it through this particular app. Uh, if I'm done moderating, it knows that this one's still running. I can actually go away and archive that. Um, and what that will do is it will basically go delete 
the, that team and or sorry archive that team out so that you know people know it's not active anymore and then if i wanted to i could go and create another breakout with groups of two maybe and have four groups instead of instead of two so it's a very common breakout scenario that we've built um, and this is all open source so if you go to github.com microsoft graph um, and we come down here and just type in the word moderator uh, you'll see that there's a moderator sample there with all the steps to get it running a um, bit of npm goodness uh, npm star and you're away to the races so i'm hoping that was super useful um, So hopefully you found that useful. Um, here's some quick links. So graph.microsoft.com is gonna be the place you go to start with Graph. There's getting started there. There's lots of tutorials you can go take, links off to the Microsoft Learn to go get a certification, um, as well as our docs and the Graph Explorer where you can play with all our APIs. And then developer.microsoft.com slash Microsoft-Teams is the Microsoft Teams dev portal where all those tutorials are for like using the extension and, and all that jazz. Uh, we actually did this as a live show on demand on Twitch that lasted three hours end to end. Nicola, Michulev, and Beth Pan from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit team. That YouTube playlist is there, is available with a lovely link. Um, you can go jump on that now and watch that show. Um, we've split it up into eight different videos as a playlist, so you can kind of grab that in different chunks. And then also, I do a developer podcast with Paul Schaeferlein, uh, who's an MVP out of Chicago. We do weekly shows. I basically, well, we both try and get people from various places in Microsoft and externally to answer our questions. So uh, please check out M365 Dev Podcast and all the usual channels where you get your podcasts from. So with that, thank you very much. Um, we'll be taking questions online. Um, again, Jay Thake on Twitter and graph.microsoft.com to learn everything about the graph. Thank you for being a part of the Galactic Collaboration Summit. Join the community and meet in-person world-class Microsoft and MVP speakers this autumn in Wiesbaden, in Frankfurt, Germany, with 15 full-day tutorials and over 150 Microsoft 365 and Azure sessions at the combined European Collaboration Summit and European Cloud Summit from 26 to 28 October 2020. Community rocks.